Okay, welcome. Welcome at this session about off-the-record messaging. And of course, first the standard announcements. We need more volunteers. Please, shine up. There's much stuff to do. Uh, importantly, some cars are improperly parked. The uh, signs of these cars, uh, the license plates are posted around the camp. If one of your cars is on the list, please, re please move it yourself or we will remove it and your car might be, I don't know, sold or so. Please don't throw trash in the toilet. We have to clean it up. And an announcement I want to make myself. If you move anything into this room, please remove it as well. I see many beer bottles, water bottles, and crap. I mean, please remove your own stuff. And if you see another bottle, take it away as well. Um, I don't think we need to drink more water today. And, uh, but you can reuse the water bottles that you have. So, now to the talk. Of the record messaging by Jure van Bergen and David Goulet. What it is, what it's about, the state of the art, etc. At the end, we will have 10 minutes for QA. Uh, so please stay if you have questions for them personally. So please welcome Jure and David. Um, all right, so you can hear me, guys? Yeah. All right, so hi, everyone. Thank you to come to this uh, windy talk. Um, we are, I'm David, this is Julie. Uh, this is usable encryption, so this missing is C, encryption with OCR, uh, which is use OTR, it's a funny uh, name. And uh, we're gonna talk about some OTR stuff, and, but before I end, we're just going to present ourselves so we know who we are, guys. So I'm David, so I'm David Goulet, and D. Goulet is my uh, nickname on RC, and uh, anything, any jabber, jabberish uh, thing you can find about me. Uh, this is my OTR key, of course. Uh, so I'm just going to do a shameless plug beforehand. Uh, I'm also working on TorSox rewrite. So uh, the Tor project uh, was kind enough to uh, uh, admit that there was some problem with TorSox. The, so for those who don't know, TorSox is just a program that hijacks every uh, system calls on Linux to make them pass through the Tor network. So uh, DNS calls, connection, and stuff. And uh, there's a rewrite going on. I'm uh, almost done, so I need if you want to uh, help, collaborate, test, please go to this link, and hopefully we can uh, have a very nice improvement in Tor Sox. Next thing is KJackal. KJackal is a Linux rootkit scanner I did. Uh, it's pretty nice. It's modules. You load them. It scans if you have rootkits, uh, and it's working on the last 3.9.8 kernel, I, don't, I think. So go check it. And finally, LTTNG. This is the thing I'm working on full time. LTTNG is a Linux tracer, uh, like Ftrace, Strace, Perf. Uh, so, this is about it for my shameless plug, yeah. and uh, Julie is going to introduce herself. Itself. Hi, my name is Julie van Bergen. I'm also known as Dr. Wax. You can email me at drwax at 2600.net. Um, I do some OTR stuff, and this is my OTR fingerprint. And next to that, I also have a shameless plug. Um, I work on Digital Rights Watch. Uh, we're going to do a talk today at 3 um, at the Noisy Square on Field W. You should really check it out. We put the resistance back in home. And next to that, um, I will, well, we both work on like project for crypto.is to have better code peer review, the kind of project um, ESC or SSI OTR um, comes from that. Um, so that's what we do. All right. So um, here's our plan for this session. It's not going to be a long talk, so we are hoping for you guys to have a lot of questions, comments, and so on. So we're going to start with a small introduction of what is OTR, explaining what the properties of OTR are, uh, and then the project idea of use OTR. Then we're going to deeper into the state of OTR right now. So what's the, what's the OTR plugins available, of which, for which IMs, and what's the situation in terms of updates and security and stuff. And finally, now what? With this is the, like a surprise, not surprise, but mystery team about uh, uh, some changes we need in OTR and this larger community of IMs, instant messaging. Uh, first, of first of all, so OTR is an end-to-end -end encryption, which means it's from person to person across the internet, across the network. There is four uh, properties that are very important in OTR. There's the base of OTR, which is encryption, of course. So everyone knows they say, what is encryption. There's authentication, so we make sure we, you know who you're talking to. Deniability. So deniability, there's a nice slide and I'm gonna explain what, what, it's, what it's about. It's also known as repudiability. repudiability. Mm. And finally, perfect forward secrecy. So just to start, uh, who here uses OTR? 
All right, it's less than half. All right, so who uses Pigeon? With OTR, of course. Oh, so one, two, three, we have four person. All right, so, um, well, you're going to learn a lot of stuff. <laughs> First, Pigeon. So uh, thanks to um, um, press the Press Freedom Foundation for those fancy screenshots, um, Pigeon is, uh, is uh, a known IAM, uh, well-known IAM on Windows and, and Linux. It's also, I think, the most downloaded IAM right now in open source with ADM, which is for Mac. And uh, Pigeon OTR is a plugin that is maintained by Ian Goldberg. Ian Goldberg is the person right now, with, along with other, of course, person, but maintaining the library, the main implementation library of LibOTR. So Pigeon is done by M, and this is a very nice uh, thing they've done in terms of usability, where you get the uh, unverif you, you're starting to speak with someone and it says unverified. So this means you're talking, uh, you're in it's encrypted, your conversation is encrypted, but it's unverified, so you don't know, you're not sure who you're talking to. So then you can, uh, you can, have, uh, you can authenticate your person through the fingerprints, but this is a very tedious process, to fingerprints. And uh, there is some kind of improvement that has been done in, uh, in July, 24th of July 2007, which had the Socialist Millionaire Protocol. And this is pretty cool. So you ask a question that only the other person know, and that you know the answer, and then, then the person respond, and if it's correct, well, it's verified. There's a very nice fancy crypto behind that, and you verify. So in terms of usability, this is a key feature. This is a really important key feature. And as we're going to see through the talk, well, there's not much right now plugins for IAMs that uses this feature, even though it's there for still 2007. So now perfect forward secrecy. Per you might have heard a lot about perfect forward secrecy in the last weeks or so about all this Snowden thing where we want to put all this SSL traffic through perfect forward secrecy. So basically is you have the, those guys on the top that snooping. And uh, they finally get your, your key, your private key. But with perfect forward secrecy, it's mean like you don't do shit with the previous conversation. So your, the previous stuff is safe, even though, and even though the private key was compromised. So there's, uh, go read on Wikipedia. There's a lot of articles about that uh, uh, to understand the crypto if you're interested. But perfect forward secrecy is very important for that. Deniability, so uh, I hope this is going to be clear, but uh, so deniability is uh, the fact that you are sure to receive a message that was sent by Alice, but you can't prove that it was written by her. So uh, just uh, as a small quiz, because we have a lot of questions about deniability, is there in the room someone who knows a documented case where deniability was used in the legal court? No, right? Hmm. Okay, interesting. Uh, so, we, well, it, it's a nice feature. Uh, we don't know if uh, it's really usable in, in, in terms of, uh, of like protection legal uh, framework, but this is nice to have. Uh, so finally, what is uh, OTR? Is, is the good thing about that is protocol agnostic. So it's on the layer of the application. So you just have your discussion, you encrypt, and you send it over whatever protocol it is. So it's just like a, a text blob, if you like. Uh, offer great security, it was peer-reviewed, the design was peer-reviewed, the code is also peer-reviewed, uh, it's open source, it's been there for a while, uh, very knowledgeable people are working on that, uh, cryptographers, developers, but uh, of course this community can improve, so of, uh, of course you guys can help. Uh, Jerry is going to talk about a bit about the use OTR project. So we've been looking at all these OTR projects for like around a year because we, we saw some stuff which we could improve and one of them was the usability of most of these projects like Pitchin OTR yeah. and Adium OTR. So then we came up with the idea, so why not, so why don't we go and audit and improve these projects because they are already out there, they have a name, they are being used by people. So, you know, it would make sense to upgrade these existing projects because they have the name and the momentum. So uh, we tried, and um, I audited uh, the code together with Jacob Applebaum like around a year ago, and it was for the Windows build. And we found out that in every dynamic library for the Windows build they shipped, the oldest exploits came from 2006, 
and all the DLLs were vulnerable to at least one attack. So then we said, oh gosh, you know, this is like pretty messed up. So we're going to like submit a lot of patches to the Pitchin project in the hope that they will improve it. And they, well, there was some discussion about the security releases, and they, sometimes they thought, well, oh, you know, it's, it's out of date, but maybe it's not vulnerable, and it's only like a denial of service. So, um, you know, this, is, this isn't really like a high pri priority kind of thing to update. And um, so, Pitchin OTR, well, mainly Pitchin like a year ago was like really insecure for the Windows build. And um, only six months later, they shipped an actual bug. Like, an, well, they actually shipped a new security update for all these dynamic libraries. So it took us about like six months of like pushing the developers of like changing some security stuff. So then we were like, well, okay, so is this is going to take like six months every time or like even a year? to include our patches or, your, uh, or our contributions, then it doesn't really scale up, right? So it kind of like changed our goal from um, improving the existing instant messaging clients to improving usability and security for chat communication in general. Um, so now we kind of want to um, work on some other protocols like asynchronous OTR, which kind of means that you can send OTR messages. Um, so you do a key exchange. Uh, like it's kind of like Facebook chat, you know, that you send an OTR message, you do a key exchange. Somebody goes offline for 15 minutes, and he comes online like 10 minutes later, but your session is still inactive, and you can like, still have an OTR conversation with this guy without uh, losing any security properties. So. For that, we, we, we kind of have like, like, you know, we want to get all the user feedback from the users because we are the developers and it's really hard for us to get the feedback from the end users. So how, like, how can we fix this? How can we like have beta testing rounds of like the applications and, and that kind of stuff? So we want to bridge gaps. And by bridging gaps, we mean between the developers um, together with NGOs who um, are, um, uh, teaching these kind of like communications and applications to people who are in need of that in either in the West or like in oppressive regimes. Next to that, it's really important to have journalists included in this because they really need secure chat communication nowadays, and especially with like the latest revelations from Snowden, as we found out. So it's really important that we include those people as well in this entire process. And next to that, the activists who could use us in whatever manner they can. So we want to bring the end users to this entire community. Um, because usability is the name of the game. You know, we are kind of like stuck in this pattern for like the past 20, 10 to 20 years of that we have all the protocols in place, but the actual applications are like kind of like a pain to use. Um, this is not only like most of the OTR um, application, but it's also about PGP and Enigmail and et cetera, et cetera. So we want to include user interface designers and user experience people um, by designing the interfaces and the entire um, application. Because usability is a security feature. You could provide really strong crypto, but you know, if you like do something wrong and you don't give feedback like what exactly is going wrong when you send a message and it gives an error, then you know, people can fucking die. So we need to change this like pretty soon. So this is why we want to include user interface and user experience designers. I just thought that, I guess. <laughs> it was a nice meme. Go next. All right, so with that, we begin this, the, the process of doing the state of OTR right now as of today. So those are all the IMs, standalone IMs on desktop that uh, we found, except CryptoCap is a special case, but that we found that as OTR uh, support. There's uh, some more, but those are uh, used every day. For instance, Adium is download, uh, it was downloaded two million times just this year, so there's a lot of people using it. In terms of uh, development, Pigeon, as I said, is the, uh, is, uh, has the uh, most updated and best version of OTR alongside with uh, RSSI and now thanks to Daniel here, WeChat also, which is the small icon at the, at the, at the bottom. Uh, ADM, 
as uh, I think recently, just recently, I mean in the last month or week, and correct me if I'm wrong, uh, they, w they merged or they are about to merge the SMP support. And, um, but this, this SMP support is there, uh, was there like six years ago. So there is a, uh, OTR is not that maintained. And what the res research uh, shows that well, not only is not that maintained, but there's usually one person maintaining it. Uh, of course, voluntary. Uh, it's voluntary work. Uh, there's a lot of open bugs, and it's difficult to go on and ensure, guarantee good security in, the, in those things, even though LibOTR provides this great, great security. Um, so in terms of OTR libraries, there's the C libraries, as I said, which is nice API, ABI uh, uh, provided in C to just use, so you basically use it to encrypt the different messaging uh, uh, part of, of uh, your discussion into OTR uh, complete stream. There's also a pure Python OTR, which is very nice and well maintained of what we can see, and maybe the person who does, uh, who's maintaining it is here. It's, I think it's Aflux on GitHub. Uh, this is very nice, and I think WeChat uses pure Python OTR also. There's also a Java implementation, but as we said, this last commit was a year ago. And Scheme Go JavaScript is also doing that. I mean, CryptoCat has, has its own version of OTR in JavaScript. Uh, hopefully, I think there's a lot of work doing uh, is being done to come up with a standard OTR JavaScript library. Uh, so yes, I'm missing a link here, unfortunately, but there is a draft being done uh, by Paul Wooters, uh, uh, which is here on, on the camp. Uh, that uh, for the RFC, alongside with, uh, I don't remember his last name, but Peter something, uh, that uh, to be uh, officially accepted by the IETF uh, group. Uh, there is a link, it's on GitHub. Uh, just, we're gonna get it, and then we can send it on to our demo something. And there's also this very nice Dane authentication for our keys that was done also by Paul, uh, done in July. So please uh, review those drafts, help out. Uh, go read them, go develop them and stuff, play with them. It's a community effort, we need this. So uh, this, is, uh, this is really good for TR. Uh, now Jury is gonna talk about a bit about Pigeon, because Pigeon is really, it's the biggest IAMs used, right? It's the largest uh, user base in IAMs in open source, and there's some kind of weird problem with that. So as I have told before, like we, I kind of like audited Pigeon, and we found out a lot of interesting things about Pigeon. Not only have they an enormous amount of lines of code, like more than 300,000, where the Linux networking subsystem is about half a million lines of code. So we, we kind of like have a problem here. But like we are not, it's not going to happen, and it's not possible to audit 300,000 lines of code um, for security stuff. So maybe it's too, too big to succeed. Maybe it's not such a good idea to, to improve the existing clients out there because they haven't been designed by security and anonymity by default, right? So it doesn't make sense to like, turn this around completely. We can only help them with some security processes that they like, ship out uh, security patches way sooner than six months later. Um, so this is kind of like a problem because the development workflow it's a pain in the ass. I'm not saying they are lazy, but there is some room to improve things. Um, so security is not a focus of the development workflow as it is now. It might get better, they thought, after the new release of the 3.0 release, but I'm not so sure. Um, so hopefully um, we can change that. And there's actually an interesting thing because we, there is some talk about integrating OTR into Pigeon itself in main Pigeon, because nowadays you have like Pigeon, you have Pigeon OTR, and we want to, uh, we want to include OTR by default in Pigeon. Um, so that's gonna happen, uh, you can contribute to that. It's like an, an open ticket on um, Pigeon.im, if I'm right. Yeah, so um, I, I, th I think you all, you probably read the uh, Moxie stuff, it did a very good, nice thing, tech security and all sorts of stuff. And he came up like 20 days ago with a quote after this uh, Elm.is uh, 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 thing from, uh, not TP, but uh, Peter. P P Peter Sander. Yeah. And uh, this is a nice quote. He was in the, like in a small blog post where basically saying that newcomers, it's nice that newcomers come in, but they usually fuck up. And this, is a, uh, this poses a problem 
in terms of uh, mobile application, because this is, was for mobile, uh, where you see all of these right now are secure apps, mobile. There's 11 of them there, and there might be the other that are pretty known, Science Circle, Tech Secure, iMessages, and stuff. So you, all, so you get to the point where you have your, uh, mo your, mo your mobile phone, you want to get into a secure text application, and you see that. So what do you do, right? Um, and then there's a lot of things like th in, this, uh, in those uh, clients that are basically done by a small group of people, not in terms of community, it's, yeah, it's open source, but there's no community around, there's no uh, pre-review board and stuff, or pre-reviewed or whatever. Uh, and this has caused problems in terms of security, and there's this why Moxie said that, like, well, either you fucked it up, and then you, the, the users go to a new IM, and they have problem of choice again, and the cycle goes around. So, in terms of mobile, there's a problem, because there's too much. Too much is not a bad thing. The problem is that they are not based on the same foundation of security where OTR, where like a lib OTR implementation, which is a foundation that should be built on. They all do their proper stuff, they, their, uh, not the proper stuff, but their uh, property stuff or uh, some modification of OTR and, and other things. A success story now. Uh, you all have heard of this, right? CryptoCat. So, uh, why is it a success story? I think CryptoCat has a huge amount of user right now. So first, so apart from all the security shit that happened with, with uh, CryptoCat, or if you are like uh, uneasy with Nadim or not, well, it, they're doing a great job. This is a good team. And inside a browser, so there was an easy access. It was an easy, easy way of getting from Facebook to a secure chat in the same program. Uh, so people can socialize and still be secure within CryptoCat. And this is a nice user interface. If you look at this, this is a, re a really nice example of how usability can be improved. So for ver ver fingerprint verification, there is this nice color that was added. And it seems like not much, but in terms of the user, end user, like my mother seeing that, that makes more sense to compare colors than blobs of base 64 stuff, right? Uh, ex uh, uh, decimals, exadecimal stuff, sorry. Uh, so, this success story comes to, to basically doing a, a fancy interface in a way that is accessible to everyone, which is the web browser. But of course, one does not simply use OTR after that. So uh, uh, CryptoCat has a lot, uh, add a lot of problem. It will be, uh, will, there will be s some other bugs also if, like, if you don't write codes, there is no bug, right? Uh, so they, they, they got some, uh, they did their Pro their own OTR implementation and moved on with that. So usability should be an OTR property and actually uh, uh, should become an OTR property. Uh, not in terms of uh, specification like deniability and stuff, but it should be when you use OTR, when you develop OTR, when you, you create a plugin, usability, meaning it's usable for the user, it's easy to access, and please go see Psi plus IM, go see all the command lines I am, it's really complicated to start OTRs, OTR uh, uh, conversation. So now the big question, do we, do, we still, do we still need standalone I am client today? And by standalone I am, I mean uh, instant messaging uh, software on desktops. So we all have our fancy Nexus 4, Samsung stuff, open hardware, free phone, it's very nice, fair phone. Uh, but still, I am still used on desktop. So we think yes, right? We think that it's still needed, uh, and web browser chat is not only the only answer, it's their complementary action. So why a new IAM client would be great, or it is, if it's new, it should be like, well, uh, why IAM clients are still used right now, sorry. So there's a control over security and interface, uh, where in web browser you don't have that much control. Uh, easy migration for existing users. So this is debatable, but when, especially when Gmail drops, in, uh, drops out XMPP support, but uh, for instance, Facebook still supports it. So you can use it just into Pigeon, and you have your roster, and you're good, and you use OTR. Uh, you don't depend on the biggest uh, attack vector of all, which is the web nowadays. Um, well, again, this is debatable. This, those are not like... Uh, real objective, uh, uh, 
the object of a point, but uh, web is very dangerous uh, nowadays. Uh, you'd have to trust third-part JavaScript and, and a lot of stuff like that. So again, when you're on your computer with a standalone IAM, uh, there's a much more control. And focus on security and privacy also by design should be like no question asked. Development cycle should be on privacy and security. So uh, you remember those emails, uh, those IAMs, I'm sorry, back in the 2000 where AOL, MSN, and ICQ. Right? So those are uh, the old way of, uh, of communicating because it was one-on-one -on -one where you could just sign in, you, get to, you, you find your friends online, and then you just send a message to one person, to another person. So there was this all AOL era of uh, messaging, and then uh, I think Pigeon got uh, renamed from... Gajim. Yeah. Uh, no, no, Gajim still uh, exists. From the old AOL, I think, uh, uh, client. I don't remember. So this is like 10 years ago. Now you see this kind of thing. You get your phone or even desktop nowadays. You send a message and then two hours later you send another message or maybe next day and then the person might be online or offline and receive it and send it. So you do, and also it's seamless. It's, it's, it's in a way that you don't know it's if you're looking at this picture, you don't know if it's Jabber, you don't know if it's Facebook, you don't know if it's SMS, right? So the point is that you get to a point where people expect to receive messages after 10 minutes, after being online, off, offline for, for three days. Where with MSN and AOL, when those kind of, of, of software, well, you don't expect that much where you talk to the person. If it's offline, you maybe leave a message, but that's it. Oh, sorry. So Pigeon, Adium, all the IMs today are like this. But the phone industry, like Apple and Microsoft and all of the others, have a lot of money to understand that, that to make you uh, use this kind of technology, but it's pretty awesome also to, to be able to communicate at any point in time with different protocols. So we get to this new chat paradigm, this new thing, which it's synchronous and asynchronous communication. It's offline messaging, or you are online all the time, right? So there's both of the situation. It's, you have integrated media files also, video, images, nonstop. You, you, you receive a message and the image is there. You don't have to put a link on Facebook and so on. It's protocol agnostic also. I mean, in, by agnostic, it means like combined together in your application but nowadays. And also, it would be kind of cool to, to we, we kind of uh, take it to granted right now with the, all the Apple nice product that you can seamlessly change to mobile, to your TV, to your desktop, everything. So it's not only new client, but it's new chat experience. It's a new user experience. And this makes us propose a big experiment with the community. Uh, so there's a lot of effort going on with MPOTR. So MPOTR is a multi-party OTR uh, thing. So it means in a chat, a group chat like RSC, everyone can communicate in OTR, ma uh, in OTR fashion way. The problem is that MPOTR is a very complicated pro problem in terms of cryptography and in terms also of understanding what uh, a modern communication chat encryption is. Mm -hmm. uh, meaning, what's a group chat? What's about if someone, we don't want to see the history, we want someone, someone going online, offline, what's going on? So this is why we propose to uh, uh, create as a community basic requirements of what we think a modern chat system is and then produce protocol or adapt the protocol that we have in terms of, 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 of um, data transmission to encryption. Uh, so as a, a, good, uh, a guy who helped us, uh, helped us out a lot, Elia, so not a manifesto, it's a chatifesto. So basically we want to create a chatifesto. Uh, we think that this should at least have the OTR properties because we have OTR right now and we want to use OTR for that. And then asynchronous communication because it's very important. Then multi-party can come in and, also, and, and, and go on to, uh, to understand those requirements and proceed to uh, the designs, the application, the specification and stuff. So it's basically going to step back and understanding all the, these, these new IMs and maybe new, new reality are. New IOTs are. So there's a pad, and this is a big experiment, meaning we are asking you to help create this Chatifesto as a community, as an hacker community, as a professional community. If you do UI, community managing, cryptography, code review, everything, we need everyone's opinion. 
the, the point is not trashing the thing, but reading, adding your ideas, and let's talk about that so we can create this chat festo and which are requirements, and then go on to create new, better encryption end to end. So please uh, join that on F OFTC if you're interested. There's the pad, nine minutes left. And finally, the last one, the end. Uh, please help us out. We need to increase the OTR community. There's a lot to do. Uh, developer, developers, and also especially UI, please, uh, user interface, very important. Uh, we're going to try to create a bigger project with uh, the team at RiseUp and uh, Leap also to come out with this huge federated XMPP servers uh, farm with OTR and, and, and new ways of uh, using modern encryption into the new chat paradigm. Uh, big thanks to Eli and Micah from Rise Up that helped us, helped help us out a lot. They put out a lot of time with us to create this and study all the things. OTR on RC, OTR dev on RC, mailing list, please, questions, trolling, anything. Thank you, David and Jura. Uh, there were questions. Uh, please put questions into the mic. Uh, I'll, I'll see you and I'll br bring the microphone to you. There was a question from the gentleman here first. Hi, Hi. Um, Paul. So, so earlier in your talk, um, you mentioned that every DLL had security bugs. Just to clarify, you meant pigeon DLLs, uh, right? Not pigeon OTR DLLs. Yeah, although I'm not entirely sure if this the Pitsin OTR repository is up to date with the latest DILs. I'm not sure. So we had some problems finding people that actually wanted to regularly rebuild the, the Windows version because yeah. we didn't find that many people that were actually running the Windows version. But mm -hmm. um, if there's someone who can regularly do this, that would be good. And then the other thing maybe you can explain to me, you talk a lot about this in asynchronous um, OTR. Mm -hmm. And what I'm not entirely understanding is as far as I know, OTR can be completely asynchronous right now already. The only thing is that you have to make sure not to go into the finish state when you log off. So, so I don't think it needs a protocol change or anything. Well, it, we don't think it's a protocol change. It's probably an adaptation of the protocol or improvement. Because yes, you can do that as we, we talked uh, yesterday about that. But you have to at least initiate a communication in OTR. You, can, you can't send a bulk of data uh, for an, uh, to an offline person without initiating some kind of communication before ANTS. Say so yes, uh, the point is that you, we can make it work. But, but why does it matter where your message is stored? Because y y y if, if, I'm not, if I'm asleep and I'm not reading your message, whether that, that message is in my o OTR client waiting for me to read or in your send queue waiting for you to send it to me, it doesn't really matter. I'm not going to see it until I get up. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, yeah, no, it doesn't matter where, it, where, where it's stored or where, where you want to wait or not. The, the problem is more about the encryption phases of OTR. If you're offline, we never add a uh, 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 exchange keys. Now, the problem is that if we don't start a session, how can I send you something in OTR uh, fashion way? And that's the problem. That is one problem. We can add, like, improve to maybe work, uh, work with that or it, we can judge that, well, it's not that useful, so maybe we can drop it and use OTR in async way. So that would be great. Yeah. We have a question over here. Hi. Uh, so uh, I also read about the problems with Pigeon, and uh, me and a bunch of other people uh, didn't feel comfortable using it because of the threats. We should we talk. Face. Sorry? We should talk after, yeah, after uh, the Q&A. Um, and uh, so uh, now we just use uh, GPG or the sneaker net, depending on what we're going to send. Uh, is there a standalone, my question is, is there a standalone Linux client that you would recommend, uh, I mean, that you feel comfortable recommending? Because I'm fine with using GPG if, if uh, there is no client that is sufficient. And I'm, I'm curious about the cryptography, and I'm also curious about uh, you mentioned uh, the 300,000 lines of code. That, that doesn't feel uh, Right. Nice. Um, so, so I'm going to answer this yeah. one. Uh, we don't know what, which one is best, because there is no uh, thorough code review on anyone. But there is a reason why we think Pigeon LTR will be the best one to use right now. It's because, first, it's the most updated software. Uh, it's well-coded. 
Mm -hmm. And uh, Ian is behind that, is doing a lot of work, and there's much more testing went in in Pigeon OTR than other plugins. So Pigeon is a problem. Pigeon OTR, the plugin, plugin Pigeon OTR is good. So we will recommend to use Pigeon OTR as of today for these reasons, in terms of because it's usable, it's very easy to understand what's going on with your encryption, and also the code is not is not bad at all. Uh, but there's no like pragmatic, uh, like real uh, certainty with IAM's plugins. I see you. Um, would you have any plan to uh, better integrate uh, OTR with the open PGP web of trust? Uh, I've heard Ooh. some uh, work being done on, uh, in that field. I, uh, yeah, like Paul is working on them to integrate the, the keys into the Dane. So I guess that's the, the web of trusting that is being worked on in an RC. But integrating it, yeah. Um, uh, kind of a segue on that. Um, right now I use OTR in many different chat applications like RSSI and all that, and they all store their own different keys if, in, if it's for the same account. Is there a space maybe in the library to uh -huh. just make it so that you have like one storage and yeah. one account for those stupid keys? Yeah, so I guess this is where the OTR off C comes in right, is that we want to define like how the keys are generated and that everybody will be like um, compatible with the RFC because at the moment it's kind of like a pain to migrate all the keys to various devices. I know the Guardian project like coded something for this. It's called OTR file converter and it's on GitHub. Um, but yeah, it's not enough. I, I think it only like moves pitch in OTR keys to like Guardian applications. So yeah. Hi there. Uh, what about joining the Pirate Bay guys? Because they were also starting up their own messaging service based on XMPP and also user interaction and they got funded. Uh, well, yeah, the, I think it's the, uh, what's this, Bulldog? Uh, Bulldog client or Gold, uh, Goldbug, I don't remember. Yeah, but they don't use OTR as far as I'm concerned. They use SSL and PGP. Uh, so there's one problem I think with OTRs right now is that is this, this this offline messaging problem, it can be it can it can be done as as Paul stated. You, you can have tricks without not finishing the the uh, the, 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 the OTR discussion. But uh, it seems that uh, the the next the the, the new IMs in the, on mobile application are just going for the easy way, not to fix OTR in that in that matter. So they're going, going to SSL and PGP. So this is pretty difficult to team up with those guys. But if they're open to the OTR, well. Hallelujah. Hi, uh, Paul again. Um, just uh, the, the URL you're missing is uh, github.com uh, slash stpeter slash otr dash spec. I'll give it to you later as well. Great. Um, so that's where the RFC, um, but we're, we're working on the RFC. It will only cover wire format. It will not cover storage format locally. That That's like an application uh, uh, thing on its own, mm. so yeah. so that's something that that the applications will have to work on. Um, we can work on and seeing maybe if we can change something in in libotr. Um, it was using the dot purple structure, mm -hmm. and I guess the hope was that everybody was was going to use that, so that there would be one format. But maybe there should be some configuration option to to specify mm -hmm. the file. Mm -hmm. um, I hope that they they use the same display formats for the keys for the other places as well because it's a little tricky to convert the key, and if we are presenting the keys to the users, then they, they definitely should be in a, uh, in a format that are the same across applications. Yeah. Yeah. And on one last note, the, um, the color bar with the, uh, that um, CryptoCat is using mm -hmm. makes me really nervous. There's a reason why there's so many numbers there. It's yeah. because we really want to verify that, and we're already reducing a, 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 you know, a, a, a 2048-bit key to a, a smaller number by hashing it, by again sort of hashing it into six colors makes me really well, nervous. So I'm not sure you're comparing the colors. I think you just it's just to highlight the section of the fingerprint. But I'm not sure. I, I don't think you. Yeah, but if colors. people then start using and saying, "Oh, um, okay, so my 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 key is brown, brown, yellow, orange, purple," then we've really reduced it to something that can be easily man in the middle. This is a problem. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Of course. I think the CryptoCat people here take notes. 
No more questions? Oh, one lady back. Um, I have one question. Do you have any numbers concerning the users of OTR and which protocols they are using? I'm, I'm sorry if you didn't understand the... Oh, okay. Um. Ah, okay. I, didn't uh, I ask again. Do you have any numbers how many users of OTR are using which protocols? No, um, I don't. No. I, I, we, there are some test statistics about the downloads of various clients like IDM and Pitchim, but that's about it. That's the only statistics we have at the moment. So I mean, I assume most OTR users are just using Jabber. Wouldn't it also be a good idea to have an XCP for OTR? This XMPP protocol extension? Uh, I'm not aware of any extension. I mean, why do you need an extension for uh, OTR? In XMPP, I mean, I mean XMPP, uh, as of now, every, most of the users are using OTR over XMPP. Mm -hmm. And it's just big messages, base64 messages that are sent. That's it. So you don't need an extension to help out OTR, actually. Mm. Yeah, I mean, for example, G uh, PGP has a nice integration in Java where the one who doesn't have, uh, who, who can't encrypt the message, then we'll see you will send an encrypted message, which is for OTI example where many um, people just read, yeah, a stream of characters and such an integration. But there are no plans for it. Uh, yeah, is there, is, is there a question? Because I'm not sure. M maybe I just come, <laughs> come afterwards and then. Uh, yeah, come, come see after us. Come see us after.